policing in America is systemically racist. You've heard it from the president. Our soul will be troubled as long as systemic racism is allowed to persist. You've heard it from the co-president. America has a long history of systemic racism. And every single person in the establishment media. Deep-seated racism has infected the United States of America for hundreds of years. And Absolutely. Has it is a lie. Hey, man, let me talk to you for a second. Let me talk to you for a second. It's pretty amazing how people thought, oh, body cam footage will solve all the problems because we'll actually see what cops do. But there are cases where the body cam footage is bad for the cop just because people don't understand what cops do on a daily basis. You think the cops are like Jerry Orbach in Law and Order. Hey, I'm asking you a question. What's the charge? Oh, there's no charge. This one's on us. It's not the way that works. He's got a gun! He's got a gun! Stop the gun! Go, go! Yes, the police arrest black Americans at higher rates than white Americans. They also arrest white Americans at a higher rate than Asian Americans. The question isn't what proportion of a population is arrested. The question is whether the police are targeting a population by race for arrest. If the police are merely arresting people who commit crimes, and the crimes are committed disproportionately by race, that is not the police's fault. That's the police doing their job. Just before President Biden's inauguration, the Justice Department's Bureau of Justice Statistics issued a report designed to answer whether the police were arresting people at disproportionate rates based on crime reports. If 20 out of 100 crime reports named a black suspect, but 60% of police arrests were black suspects, for example, that would be presumptively discriminatory. If 60 out of 100 crime reports named a black suspect, and 60% of police arrests were of black suspects, that would be the police doing their job. The report concluded, according to the Wall Street Journal, that there was no statistically significant difference by race between how likely people were to commit serious violent crimes and how likely they were to be arrested. In other words, the data suggested that police officers and sheriff's deputies focus on criminals' actions, not their race. The report compared arrest statistics with victims' reports and found no statistically significant difference. For non-fatal violent crimes, for example, 35% of reported offenders were black. 33% of arrests were of black Americans. This does not look like systemic racism. I know people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are, we are terrified. How about police shootings? Are the cops routinely gunning down black Americans as they just live their lives, as LeBron James suggests? Right now, for black people right now, we are hunting. We think it's, you hunt us, unfortunately. As Heather McDonald's reports, in 2019, police officers fatally shot 1,004 people, most of whom were armed or otherwise dangerous. African-Americans were about a quarter of those killed by cops last year, 235, a ratio that has remained stable since 2015. That share of black victims is less than what the black crime rate would predict since police shootings are a function of how often officers encounter armed and violent suspects. In 2018, the latest year for which such data have been published, African-Americans made up 53% of known homicide offenders in the US and committed about 60% of robberies, although they were 13% of the population. Police officers are 18.5 times more likely to be killed by a black male than an unarmed black male is to be killed by the police. In August 2019, the National Academy of Sciences published research showing that there was, quote, no significant evidence of anti-black disparity in the likelihood of being fatally shot by police. Actually, police are less likely to kill black people than white people in the same circumstances, according to Professor Peter Moskus of John Jay College of Criminal Justice at CUNY. Moskus found that adjusted for the homicide rate, whites are 1.7 times more likely than blacks to die at the hands of police. Adjusted for the racial disparity at which police are feloniously killed, Whites are 1.3 times more likely than blacks to die at the hands of police. Disparities in arrest statistics between black and white have been reflective of differential crime rates for decades. As Barry Latzer reports, from 1976 to 1995, blacks were identified by police as the perpetrators in more than half of homicides. From 2000 to 2014, African Americans were murdered eight times as often as whites per capita, nearly always as a result of black-on-black -black assaults. 
57% of blacks in state prison were convicted of violent crimes. Systemic racism. This isn't a believing in something like the tooth fairy. Our prisons overcrowded, filled with a disproportionate number of black faces, harsher sentences, less effective counsel, uh, more police encounters in their communities. That's what you get, more in the prisons. More blacks and Hispanics are in prison, proportionately, because more blacks and Hispanics commit serious crimes, proportionately. The notion that blacks and Hispanics are being disproportionately targeted in spite of offense rates is a lie. As early as 1994, the Justice Department under Bill Clinton found that blacks had a lower chance of prosecution than whites in 75 major American cities. Thomas Sowell attributes the persistent high rate of black crime to what he calls a ghetto culture, brought about by what he terms black redneck culture. Lawless habits adopted by Southern blacks from their white Southern brethren. Sowell says that this culture, which began to recede in prominence in the 1940s and 50s, returned with a vengeance thanks to the political left in the 1960s, leading to skyrocketing crime rates. Those people have created an atmosphere in which um, these counterproductive cultures are to be celebrated, perpetuated, uh, and the consequences overlooked. The sad irony is that the same people who claim they want to protect black lives will get black people killed by removing the cops from the equation. One of the most robust social science findings available is the simple fact that more police means less crime. From 1935 to 1964, the United States enjoyed an unprecedented drop in the crime rate. Then it all collapsed. From 1970 to 1990, Americans were more likely to be victimized in a violent crime than to be injured in a car accident by a long shot. As of 1990, four in 10 Americans said they were afraid to walk alone at night. The crack epidemic had crippled major metropolitan areas around the country. And then, almost as if a switch had been flipped, crime dropped. From 1990 to 2009, homicide, robbery, burglary in the big city fell an astounding 80%. From 1993 to 2014, the number of violent crime victimizations dropped precipitously, according to the Justice Department from 79.8 victimizations per 1,000 people to 20.1 in 2014. So, what happened? Major metropolitan areas increased their police forces dramatically. From 1994 to 2000, under the crime policy of Bill Clinton, mirrored on state and local levels, America added 70,000 police officers. Similarly, across the country, authorities began increasing sentencing, instituting mandatory minimums, and doing away with parole for multiple time offenders. The crackdown on the crack epidemic meant more arrests. Prison population soared, but crimes declined dramatically. Contrary to popular opinion, the vast majority of the arrest increases had nothing to do with drugs. As Latzer writes, between 1990 and 1996, prison commitment ratios rose for violent crime except rape and declined for drug offenses by 25%. Mass incarceration, which the left loves to hate, was responsible for the prevention of tens of thousands of crimes. So what happens when you get rid of the cops? Crime skyrockets. One recent study from PhD student Travis Campbell of University of Massachusetts Amherst found that in the aftermath of the Black Lives Matter movement in 2014, police killings declined by 15 to 20%, about 300 fewer police killings in the cities with protests. But murders rose in those same cities by 10%, meaning somewhere between 1,000 and 6,000 more people died, largely black. In 2020, thanks to Black Lives Matter, the homicide rate in America's major cities rose by 30%, including a 95% increase in Milwaukee, a 92% increase in Louisville, 55% in Chicago, 45% in New York. At George Floyd Square in Minneapolis, there have been gun battles, with bloodied shooting victims dragged to ambulances because of barricades keeping the police and emergency vehicles away. Overall, in the four neighborhoods around George Floyd Square, violent crime increased 66% my friend and the Senate's most effective legislator, Senator Biden. That's nice, George. Thank you. I hope my mom was listening. <laughs> you may have seen footage of Joe Biden from the 1990s sounding, well, you know, sort of like me. We let last year in the states 30,000 convicted violent offenders never saw a day of jail. Reason? No jail cells. But now Joe Biden says that all of his prior words with regard to criminality and policing in the United States, oh, that's the past. And not only is that the past, it's racist. We talk about this mostly in terms of Black Lives Matter, 
Black lives really do matter, but the problem is institutional racism in America. So what changed? The political incentive structure. The reality is that crime was a major issue for Americans in the 1990s, and so even politicians of the left were forced to come to terms with the fact that their own policies had failed. Democrats are united in getting a tough crime bill, tough on punishment, smart on prevention. Right now, Democrats are banking on the fact that the crime rate has declined so much over the past few decades that you won't notice if it upticks now. Senate Democrats will not wait to propose and push for bold, bold change. We need to reform a criminal justice system that is still too short on justice. That's not gonna last forever. Once crime rates start to rise, and once you take away the only militating factor against crime rising, namely the cops, now you have a snowball effect. It's truly incredible that we live in a day and age where if you say the phrase law and order, you're then castigated as racist. Law and order is the central pillar of any civilized society. If people don't obey the law, there will be no order. It is indeed that simple. By attempting to castigate the police as the real problem in black America, as opposed to criminality, by putting the blame on the system when individuals commit crimes, you are depriving black Americans of agency. You are suggesting that when they commit crimes, they're not responsible for those crimes because the system itself is responsible. I take responsibility. And the flames at times well out of control. They're making life worse until... by telling individuals in the freest system in world history that they are not responsible for their own decisions. And no matter what kind of great decisions they make in their life, they can never get ahead. And that is an abject lie. <laughs>